everyone <clears throat> welcome to this week's dandelion lesson uh, it's Sunday morning this week was a little bit different I just I had I, I watched my granddaughter um, one two three four days this week at different times and so it, it really my, my whole schedule was different and so um, I'm really trying hard to take Sundays off but this week it just wasn't possible but you might notice that I'm not answering questions on Patreon on Sunday, unless it's something um, dire, like you're, you you have time to do an, um, a lesson and it's one of the ones that's locked still, um, things like that, please message me. And I, I always um, see them, but I might not answer them until Monday, unless it's something that really needs my attention. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to take Sundays off and, and um, also from commenting on social media, I might post my morning walk or something, but then try not to try, try not to scroll too much, right? <laughs> um, I just, my, my schedule is really, really tight right now and I'm trying to find more time um, to just be present and, and be not anxious about everything I need to get done. So we all have that right now, I think. More than more than usual, um, just the way the world is. Uh, it's been it's been hectic and full of anxiety for most of us, I think. But anyway, so we should all be mindful of of the time we spend and where we can make time to be without any external noise, um, we should do our best to find time for that. So it's Sunday morning. Rick just left um, to go do some work at, at my studio. We're actually sharing that now since we're both working from home. Um, and he can, it's a little too warm for me to be there in the summer because there's no air and it's been very hot. So he's been going there um, when we both need quiet time to do our work. And so he's gone, <clears throat> and then when he comes home, he's bringing home all the ingredients to make gumbo, because we're in with all the veggies from our garden, and we grew okra this year, so we're gonna make gumbo tonight. It'll be fun. And I'm having some yummy tea that Kitty sent to me, and a beautiful mug that Margaret sent to me that I treasure. I love this mug and this tea. So I'm just sipping, I have some goldenrod honey from lo local honey. Mm. It's delightful. So I feel very peaceful. And I, I, I started my morning, um, my morning practice, um, writing some things down about this next lunar cycle, right? Um, we have a, a new moon in Leo coming on Tuesday. And um, just sort of looking at the astrology for myself for the month ahead and um, especially this this lunar cycle and there are some things that I really personally want to remember and to invite into my um, into my everyday experience right now I have a lot to accomplish within this lunar cycle my next book is due <laughs> so um, it, there's a lot pointing to a very organized schedule and I'm gonna I'm going to do my best. But when I when I write about a new lunar cycle, I also pull cards. And I'll usually pull three um, tarot cards and, you know, a few oracle cards as well. And two of the oracle cards I pulled this time I wanted to share with you today because I think the message um, is really universal. And while I'm not going to share my whole reading, I wanted to share these two. So I'm going to start... Um, with this card and this is from the archetypes deck by Kim Kranz. She is the one who uh, of what the wild unknown fame, right? <clears throat> and I've got strong sunlight right now. I hope you don't mind that. It's really kind of lovely. So the vision card is the card I pulled for this lunar cycle. And um, it actually went when you when you would see my whole reading that I pulled it just fit perfectly in the middle. It was so interesting. All the colors batched and 
owls. The, the whole thing was like this beautiful uh, sinistry, right? But I started thinking about this card and then I read um, in the guidebook and I really wanted to share it with you and I thought it would be a branching off point for some things that I'd like to talk about. So what, what a beautiful card, right? Beautiful, beautiful image. So what Kim Cran says about the vision card, she calls it the dream, the imagined, the revealed. Those are the key words. And she says, it is said that we are each born with a unique vision, a destiny toward which we are aimed. It is also said that we forget this vision the moment we are born. Thus, we are sent on a lifelong journey of rediscovery. Such is the elus elusive nature of the vision. It slips away, yet it guides. It appears in strange dreams and surreal images, seemingly unattainable and preposterous. When we are connected to the vision, we carry an inspired, enchanted aliveness that others recognize. We trust the world and its synchronicities. We walk through new doors in wonder, into wondrous opportunities. We all want to be near those with vision. They emit energy more potent than any elixir. When we lose connection to the vision, life becomes dull and exhausting, lacking meaning. Bring back the mystery, bring back the dreams. So, boy, haven't it just think back over times in your life where you just had this flow and everything felt right and good and for me those times are when I'm most connected to my vision sort of my holy grail you know what my life what I've sort of come to understand is my life's purpose and I'm still I'm still undecided about that and it still shifts and changes and it, and it always will but I have this general idea of what my life's purpose is. And when I'm connected to that vision, when I'm connected to the work that matters to me, whether it's the work that I've done to make money or not, we all have different kinds of work in our life. And I consider a vocation something that we do, whether we make money from it or not, right? Sometimes we're really lucky and, and income comes from that vocation, but it's not always the case. And I spent oh, decades and decades um, doing, you know, eight, ten dollar an hour job so I could still do my vocation from from my own private space, right? So, <clears throat> so the vision it to me is sort of like that. It's sort of like our life's purpose. And I love what she says about we're born with it and yet we forget it the moment we are born and that's what we strive for. Our whole life is to rediscover it, right? And we have dreams and visions and, and mysterious things happen and synchronicities in our life and images and symbols that recur in our dreams and even in our waking hours. Things that matter to us, words, our lexicon of words that's so intimate to ourselves. Like, I don't know if you've ever done this exercise, but I, I love old typewriters and I have many around my house. And I keep a piece of paper in one of them. And every now and then I just type a word that um, it, that is sort of in me and is not leaving me. Um, and then this list grows. I have, I don't know, dozens of pages like this. And it's funny that the same words happen over and over again, right? For years, I wrote a weekly magazine called Unweaving the Nest. It was a subscription magazine, and I did essays and recipes and playlists and artwork and photographs and all of these things, quotes. And one time, um, I took all of the words from every issue for a year, and I ran, th ran them through one of those word scrambler things, and it came out with this word map. And it's amazing how often I use the same words. Words like winter and snow and sparkles and willow and field and spider. And, you know, 
blue heron and moon and clouds and wind. So you start to see words that you that, that matter to you, right? That come up again and again throughout your life. So I love that idea that our life is spent on this journey, sort of recovering and rediscovering our life's purpose. And and hopefully there comes a time in later adulthood where it becomes clear, right? And 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 you can start refining it and really working toward it. Sometimes it comes earlier to some people, which certainly didn't for me. It came came after I was 45 for sure. Um so it, it, I, I just love that idea that we're all sort of evolving toward our life's purpose and our vision. And I love the idea that, um, that when we carry it, then when we're in tune with it and we're paying attention to it and we're giving it nourishment and space in our lives, that we carry this inspired, enchanted aliveness, Right? we begin to trust the world and its synchronicities. We walk through new doors into wondrous opportunities and it happens. It really does. I've seen it happen in my own life when we're connected to that flow, right? So what are the things that keep us from that? I think sometimes it's just fear. I think sometimes it's being overwhelmed and tired um, and, and always struggling to make ends meet. I mean, for me, that was surely the case. Um... But I think for me, when it really broke open was when I began to have a daily creative practice with watercolor. And not just the detailed watercolors that sort of, you know, got me going in a career, but more the personal stuff that I never share with anyone, right? I mean, it's very rare that I share my, my meditation journal. I did it for a while, and I stopped because it just, it lost some sacredness, right, for me. So once I started that and started recognizing the benefits of it and began to share it with others, the, share the process as well as the results for a while, um, then I started to really feel aligned and things just started moving from there, right? And and it was like a jumping off point to, to, to the bigger picture for me. In my work, in my, in my life's purpose, all of those things. So I just want you to think about this in your own way, your own vision, your own dream, your own life's purpose, your own lexicon of words and images and colors and places and objects and the things that really matter to you. And maybe you start a little notebook, a little sketchbook that you just write down words. You just paint colors that make your heart sing, you know, in a, in a pleasing way. You write little snippets of poetry, um, copy down lines from poetry that others have written that really sparks your heart. Right, and so it's like this little book of secrets. It's nothing that we share, but it's just for us. It's our book of secrets, our book of vision, right? Um, I have one. I'm not gonna show it to you. <laughs> I'm not gonna show you what's inside of it, but it's big and it's hefty and it's not pretty and nothing in it is pretty. It's just, it's really a, just a load of scribbles and thoughts and cut out pictures and little swipes of paint and it's not pretty, but it's full. This is my fourth book like this, this year. Look how thick these are I, because I can just write and write and write and scribble and make a mess and nobody's gonna see it. It's my book of secrets. And sometimes, I mean, I do my morning meditations in there. It's not the best paper, but it doesn't matter. They're still beautiful to me, right? So that's kind of what I wanted to share today. And it's open-ended and it's for you to explore on your own. But I really, um, I really think it's an important thing. And it's something that I try to inspire in, in, in everyone that I come you know, into contact with what, where I'm trying to teach the creative practices. Something 
that it's probably the most important thing I could impart to someone through a lesson is, is to find time for that for yourself. And it can be, you know, it can take a while, right? And it's, and it changes. Everything changes. Nothing is permanent. Nothing, nothing, nothing lasts, right? We could come to the pages every day and have a different vision. And that's absolutely normal and beautiful and fine. What matters is, is that you take the time to allow yourself to dream about it. Okay? So that's that's the card from this deck that I wanted to share with you today. And the other one is from the, I think this is from the forest, no, forest of, forest of Precious Twigs. I love this Oracle deck. So this card, look at it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's so perfect for me right now. I can't even tell you. She's like, honey, you are so overwhelmed and it just keeps pouring down on your head. Let me take your hand. Let's go outside and get our feet wet and walk in the rain. Let's feel it. You know, let's find that peace. It's two, it's the two sides of us, right? I just, when I drew this card, I was like, yep, <laughs> that's exactly right. It's exactly right. So I just, I wanted to share that with you too. I'm going to paint. Um, I did want to talk about one thing and it's sort of a new seed and I, and it's like the Ace of Pentacles, right? It's just starting to, to grow in me, but I mentioned that I had written that magazine for years. It was called Unweaving the Nest. And it was, I mean, at, at, at its heyday, I think I had like 270 subscribers and it was $4 a month, I, you know, four or five, $5 a month. Um, and you got an issue every week and it was an overwhelming task because I made it into something, it was beautiful. And you can actually go to the website. I think it's still there unweavingthenest.com and there might be some sample issues that you could look at. I haven't touched the website in years, but I think it's still there. Um, and it, it was a huge part of my, um, my life and it gave me a sense of purpose when I was going through really, really hard times, through cancer, through divorce, through my children moving, all of it. Um, it was a remarkable thing to do and, and I miss it. And people people loved it they really did and it was sad to let it go but it, um it, there's only so much time right and so i have been i have been thinking about starting it up again in a different way and in, in a not so overwhelming way and do it through a patreon account that would be different from this one or you know i'm not even sure if i can do that so i'll figure that part out later but it might be like a quarterly thing um, it might be a quarterly thing where to start, where it, uh, on each solstice and equinox, you get this big issue full of a couple essays, some poetry, some beautiful images, some music playlists, some recipes for the season, some herbal remedies, some flower essence ideas, um, essential oil ideas, tarot spreads, you know, sort of this rich potpourri of all of the things that sustain me that I can offer to other people. So just an idea, just starting. Um, but I think this lunation cycle is the one, even though I, all these other things are happening, it for some reason, it's pointing me toward fleshing this out a little bit more. So I wanted to share it with you here first. Um, no big details yet or anything, but just, just something, just something that's starting to grow. Okay, so I'm going to paint, and we'll see what happens.
So I use some um, more gouache-like watercolors from Ocean Paper, which is a paint company, and um, my favorite transparent yellow iron oxide from M. Graham mixed in. And I used the um, Da Vinci Casaneo brush, the one that's got the big belly and the point on it, because I like I like how I can make all these wispy lines with it. And I have a gold gel pen and I, for some reason, I just felt like I wanted to add some marks. That's it. Okay, so yeah, I hope this was helpful for you and I hope um, hope that you'll consider my invitation um, to begin your own book of secrets. A place where you can uh, dream a little bit about your words and your images and dreams and colors and all of those things, little bits of poetry and writing, um, even photographs. You can print them and, and paste them in. Whatever, whatever is good for you. But it's just such an important thing to me um, that I want to share it with you and invite you to try it yourself. All right, everyone, that's it for today. I will see you um, this week with more videos. And I hope whatever you're doing today, that it's peaceful and that you find a few moments of um, silence and solitude and beauty. All right, thank you so much. And I will see you soon. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you.